joined now by Joydeep Das, Product Management SAP HANA, and Data Management Portfolio. Thanks so much for being with us. Nice to be here, Mike. What's the current relationship between Hadoop and analytic databases? Right now, it's actually not a very close relationship. If you look at analytic databases, they are looking at the core aspects of organizational data, traditionally transactional, uh, but it's pretty important data. And there's quite a bit of uh, challenges there itself to be solved, but traditional analytic databases are focused on that. And if you look at Hadoop, it's actually focused more on the edges of enterprise data, the new types of data that come from machines, sensors, people interactions. So that's being looked at uh, very comprehensively by Hadoop, but separately. So they're in kind of parallel universes, so to speak, within an enterprise. So the goal is to see how we can bring them together to provide more value. So they're not quite together uh, as of today. What do you perceive as the benefit of bringing those two together? Yeah, I mean, there are, of course, several benefits. First of all, it gives organization control over complete data set, mm. entire enterprise data. And more importantly, the value that you get out of bringing them together. The real value is being able to take decisions that were not possible with just some piecemeal data, either on the Hadoop side or on the analytical database side. And I'll give you an example. If you look at transactional data, let's say an e-commerce company, they're selling a lot of electronics during the Christmas week. So they may have sold a whole bunch of cameras. So if you aggregate all of the camera data that has been sold, it may come up to say a million dollars worth of cameras sold, or a million uh, pieces of cameras sold. And they sold about, say, 900,000 pieces of uh, DVD players, Blu-ray DVD players. But it doesn't tell you anything beyond that. Why didn't DVD sell more, even though it's mm. a uh, you know, cheaper product in terms of price, but high margin product for the e-commerce company? It doesn't tell you anything beyond that. Now, it's an e-commerce company, so it's selling through the web channel. So now if you look at all of the web log data, the clickstream data that users came through, so it gives an indication of how many people are interested in the mm -hmm. uh, actual cameras, and how many people are interested in Blu-ray DVD. So it can give you two types of data. One, it can show that a lot of people visited the site, say four million visited the site, and they sold about two million to two mm -hmm. million people, so about 50% conversion. But on the Blu-ray side, they may have two million visiting the site and 800,000 and 900,000 uh, buying it. So again, close to 50% conversion. And it can happen the other way around. Actually, two, four million came and two million bought uh, uh, cameras, but 1.2 million came and 800,000 bought uh, DVD players. Mm -hmm. So actually, DVD is selling very well. Yeah. So the action that you need to take could be different. In the previous case, you want to see how to improve the conversion rate of DVD sales. In the second case, how you want to attract more people to visit the site, because the people who are visiting, they're buying. So this kind of data and insights on what to do would not have been possible if you didn't bring that Hadoop data in conjunction with this transactional data. So that's the value. Really, if you Gives you the whole story. whole story. Or at least more of the story, story than you have right now. Your ability to react more quickly, get more um, into your sales cycle in a much more a proactive way, rather than always being reactive and behind the curve. What do you think the impact of in-memory in data technology is going to be? It's going to be huge. I mean, we are seeing that with SAP HANA itself. As you know, SAP HANA is a uh, highly optimized in-memory uh, DBMS system, especially around uh, DRAM as well as uh, chipsets, uh, modern-day chipsets that come out. So the way to look at it is in-memory is the new disk essentially. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, keeping all of your data in memory and with technologies like SAP HANA you're able to compress that uh, with its columnar capabilities. So large data can be fit into relatively uh, small amount of memory and memory is becoming pervasive in modern mm -hmm. day servers, easily available across um, you know terabytes of memory available on uh, servers as well as scale out uh, around the servers. So with that uh, in place you can do so many things it opens up possibilities. Not only uh, can you optimize with the C modern, modern day CPUs and the multi-cores that come with it, parallelize all of that, but now you can have OLTP and OLAP running in the same system. Mm -hmm. You don't need aggregates, cubes, all of those things that you have to do to get the latency out of disks and into the uh, memory. So now you have everything in memory, same data being viewed in different ways. It opens up new possibilities, simplifies the landscape. You're able to bring lots of system into, uh, lots of uh, different types of uh, deployments into one system and makes it much more manageable. So, so we're talking about pretty big Exactly, shifts. so okay. it's a sea change in many ways in what in-memory can do. All right, last question for you. Um, what developments are you tracking in the real-time analytics space? What, what should we be watching for? Absolutely, um, real-time is in, in a big way related 
to what companies can do in terms of value from big data. So when you think of real time, we always think of the data coming in and persisting, whether in disks or memory, and then we are acting on it with queries. In real time, with in memory, that changes. The latency time is much uh, shorter. You're cutting it and you can get to your ancestors very quickly. But beyond just that persistence, you also have data flowing through, streaming data coming in from events, from sensors, machine data, logs, all of that data coming in at, at a very high rate uh, from many sources. So should you always persist that and then look at the data through queries? Why not let the data flow through queries that are fixed? And that way the data gets analyzed mm. as it is flowing through. So instead of persisting and then analyzing, analyzing it as it's flowing. So that's really real time. So at SAP, we are bringing together this streaming technology with SAP HANA to be able to get more insights. Streaming data, look at it ahead of time, and then look at the HANA in-memory data and fuse them together to get a more historical perspective with the freely flowing data. So that's now really real time. So that's a, a very big development that's going on. Great, well thanks so much for joining us, appreciate it. Thanks Mike, it's nice to be here. We'll be back.